Today we'll be viewing some GFRC glass fiber reinforced concrete connection details and pictures that are related to those details. Uh, but I thought it would be a good idea first maybe to do a, a little overview of GFRC. It, it is made of cement, sand, alkali resistant glass fibers, polymer and water. Uh, color and plasticizers are added as needed. It's sprayed into the mold first as a slurry coat onto the face of the mold, then it's backed up with two or three layers of mix that have now got the AR glass in it. Uh, that's done until it's built up to about three quarters of an inch thick. With the face mix, uh, GFRC is indistinguishable uh, in exterior appearance to traditional precast or cast stone products, yet it can be many times less heavy. Usually the weight is 10 to 20 pounds per square foot, depending on the size, shape, and arrangement of the backing frame if needed. The low weight of the GFRC, uh, it decreases the, the superimposed loads on the building structure, the framing, the foundation, and it greatly reduces the equipment cost, uh, you know, makes it much easier to, to reach difficult locations. Uh, in terms of creative architectural design, uh, the possibilities for shape variation in the GFRC process provide a, a range of opportunities. Uh, the designer can choose deep reveals, complex shapes, uh, sharp curves, short radius curves, wide, wide sweeping arcs, uh, 90 degree angles. Uh, a wide range of surface finishes are available. Uh, they're achieved by exposing the aggregate, by acid washing, sandblasting, uh, integral color, white cement, textures can be used. Uh, we also will see in the details coming up that, that unless the product has a functionally strengthening shape, GFRC properties dictate the use of stiffeners uh, uh, on the panel or cornices. Uh, th that would be a prefabricated plant attached frame uh, made out of, of you know, cold rolled stud steel or structural tubes. Uh, it can be created with a upstanding skin formed rib on the back of the panel. Also an integrally cast in rib sprayed over foam, you know, like expanded styrene foam strips. Uh, each method reinforces and stiffens the, the GFRC skin and it also provides a means of connecting the panel to the supporting structure. Uh, while each method has advantages, uh, you know, use of the panel frames is, is kind of the preferred method for stiffening, um, as well as you know, stiffening and strengthening the panel. It also provides a support for attaching furring elements to the interior finish, drywall, uh, window frames. It also provides a system or provides cavity for installing uh, insulation, electrical, mechanical, uh, and telephone conduits. So, so that's a little, little overview of what GFRC is all about. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump into these details. So sheet number one is going to show you uh, an exterior elevation of a, you know, kind of a typical elevation. Uh, you've got a, a column there, a modular set of columns. It's got a base, some shafts, and a capital. On top of that is a uh, entablature that's got the, the wording delta gamma recessed into it, and then above that is another cornice. Uh, if we go on to the next sheet is actual photograph of that that first detail, and there you see the the panels being erected, and the very top photograph kind of gives you a pretty good shot of it uh, being completed. Uh, the next photograph again shows you the completed structure below, and the picture above is going to show you, you know, the, again the material being installed and erected. You'll notice there that 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 this was done with like a high reach forklift with a boom lift. Uh, the crane was not required on this job, and, and you can see right here, you see a. A, a part of that GFRC cornice being installed up there. All you see is the profile. Again, it, it's three quarters of an inch thick. So you know you can you can imagine the the weight savings uh, versus you know a traditional you know three four inch thick cast stone or precast panel. Go on to the second detail sheet number two. Here you can see the GFRC cornice uh, with a backing frame, a plant factory attached backing frame. 
So this frame uh, is, is what you're going to connect to the structure. And typically on something like this, you need two things. You need a bearing connection and you need some sort of a tie back to hold it back. So in this case here, we've got an angle iron bearing connection that's lagged into the structure. Uh, the, the support frame has got a plate welded to the bottom of it with a slotted hole. Uh, it rests down onto the bearing angle, which has a pin on it. And uh, uh, you know, you, you're going to get your elevations with that bearing angle. And then at the top, there's a bent plate. It's a strap that's bent that you're going to lag into the structure. You know, get, get your push-pull, pull the panel in and out, align it, and then you would screw that back down into the panel frame. And, uh, and that's your connection. And that is a framed, uh, pretty typical kind of a cornice connection that would have a frame attached to it. This next photograph here, now that top picture, you kind of need to rotate it counterclockwise in your head uh, to see that you're going to see now those, those bent clips attached to the structure. And you can also see it in the second photograph down below. Again, you can see that now these, these bent clips are tying back the, the frame back to the structure. Uh, this is again, same type of, uh, of picture here. Uh, you see the frame, you see the skin, and you see the bent plates screwed into the frame and then back to the structure. Here's a picture of the cornice. Uh, kind of hard to see the, the, the connections, but you know, it gives you a good idea of the frame. Uh, Again, plant, plant, plant attached. It's going to come to the job site with the frame in the, in the skin, and then uh, you would use those typical connections that we just looked at in the previous couple of details. So here is a cornice without a frame attachment. So in this case, we've got a built-out haunch uh, cast into the panel, into the GFRC cornice. Uh, and you're going to use same thing. It's kind of a uh, angle iron bearing plate with a kerf and a strap connection. And up at the top, it's literally screwing into some blocking, and the flashing of the roofing is covering up the connection point. Here's a smaller detail on sheet four, a uh, smaller cornice. Uh, this one is just applied with a kerf cut into the GFRC skin. Again, this one's skin only, no frame attachment, and you're just attaching the, the bent plates to the kerf, and you're screwing those right into the structure. Here is a detail of the column and base. Uh, this is directly related to that front elevation. So here you see the column base and the first section of column shafts being placed on top uh, of the base. So same idea. Uh, this is uh, just attaching with some pins down to the structure or to the to the to the foundation. The next layer is a is a kind of a T clip, so it's connecting that the clip is fastening to the top of the column base and to the bottom of the first set of column shafts, and then that's attached to the the metal structural support. So these are just surrounds going around the structural support. Next picture is the actual installation, uh, just like that detail shows. There you can see where the slot was cut in to the, the top of the column base, and it, it is uh, locked down in place, and then that is ready for the shafts to start being placed on top. Here you see the next detail, sheet number six. Now we've gotten to the top of that column, uh, same process, you're using a bent strap plate, it's locking the, the, the top of the top shaft in, and it's locking in the bottom of the column capital. Then the next, the, deep, the, the, the fastening attachment up on top, again, it's by a kerf and a clip, it's attaching to the top of the capital. Uh, the, you're going to have your screw attachments to the strap uh, would be exposed until the entablature is attached. And you can see the detailers put a nice note there, install columns before the cornice, and that will disguise and hide those attachments. Here's the actual picture of the installation. Uh, you can see the metal supports. Uh, you can, you know, you don't see the column, you see the joint in the columns, 
but uh, that's then stacked all the way up. You can see the entablature uh, cornice beyond, uh, which is going to be, you know, that, that installation process is happening. And if you look at the very front of that picture, uh, in front of the first column capital, you can see the angle iron with the stud on it, uh, which is the bearing connection for that uh, entablature cornice. So here is the installation basically complete. The last piece, it's, that's, that's a left-hand return uh, front uh, entablature cornice, and then you've got a small stretcher that's, that's reaching back to the brick. This detail, sheet 7, is showing you a basic, typical joint. It shows you that the GFRC is roughly 3 quarters of an inch thick. And then anywhere where the GFRC comes together or it, it, it goes back to the building, that is usually built up to about an inch and a, an inch and a half thickness, and that allows for backer rod and caulking or grout to be put into the joint. And here is a, a photograph of a joint, and you can see where, where the edge thickness is built up. And, uh, so, so that, that's going to allow you room for backer rod and caulking to seal that joint. Sheet number eight, these are just some, some different details here of uh, options for attaching veneer. Uh, you can use the same idea. The very first sketch is a kerf and a clip connection. Uh, again, it's kind of a, a you know, a, a split tailed uh, piece of, you know, uh, strapping that connects to the top and to the bottom. Uh, the second option might be using some veneer ties or brick ties. Uh, we cast those right into the into the veneer pieces and those get screwed on and as they stack up you kind of need to go through the joint to make sure you've got the, you know, the top and the bottom of those straps. Another option would be uh, you know dowels and pins. Uh, these are created by either just drilling right into the GFRC, uh, creating a, a, a pocket, which can be epoxied right on. Uh, we can use inserts in a situation like this where you would just thread into the insert. Now you've got a projecting dowel, and you would just drill in and, again, uh, thin set it, epoxy, uh, you know, whatever your engineer might decide is the best uh, proven point to, of connection there. Sheet 9 shows what would be a little bit bigger. This would actually kind of be a panel. Um, you know, this thing could be, you know, 5 foot, 6 foot wide, 12 foot tall. So here again is a, a shop installed frame. So this is the frame. This is your skin. And you've got these flex anchors that, that, that actually bond the frame to the GFRC skin. It's resting down on an angle iron at the bottom. The same thing we saw on the cornice, and then up at the top, it's got another another uh, strap connection. Uh, you might find yourself in a situation where maybe you've got a, a, a maybe it's a concrete poured building, you've got floors, so the bearing point doesn't necessarily have to be at the bottom of the panel. Uh, you might have you know an intersecting floor maybe two thirds of the way up this panel where you'd want to you know use that use that floor as a as a connection point. So the bearing could be up at the top and your, your tie back strap could be at the bottom. It, it, it could work either way. Well, let's go to page 10. Uh, here you're just going to see a, a you know, window seal, uh, a couple different ways to connect it. Uh, you know, one, again, is just a, a, a pin uh, you know, attached to the structure. Uh, the thickened edge of the seal on, on detail M uh, just pins it back. Uh, seal detail L shows a kind of pin from the outside edge, uh, and then it's being, you know, the connection detail is being covered by, by other material, uh, brick or what have you. Uh, it could also be done, that, that same idea could be done with a kerf connection. So go to page 11. Uh, this is kind of just showing a, a window header. Uh, you can see here that, that, that the you know, any, any brick or anything that's going to be stacked on top of the header, there's a metal angle iron ledge to carry the brick. You know, again, the GFRC really is not structural. It is just a shell of a material being three-quarters of an inch thick, very lightweight. 
so in this case, you know, there's an angle iron above it, which is going to carry the weight, and then the, the header is just spanning across, and it's connected via the clip. These are some, sheet 12 shows you some just two-piece split columns. Uh, we do a lot of these. These are non-structural columns. They're surrounds. Uh, and we normally just cast a couple of inserts into the column skin. Uh, using a bent strap, you just strap, you just uh, attach the strap to the insert, and then the, the, the strap is bent around your structural support, whether that be a wood post, 4x4, four 6x6. Four, six six. It could be a metal uh, tube steel support. It could be a round tube support. And then you screw that first half. Uh, into the structural support, getting it level and plumb, and then the second half of the column is just drilled into the thickened edge, and by pins it is uh, epoxied or or set together. Uh, same thing, inserts could be used on the first half of the column, and then pockets can be pre-drilled into the second half, uh, making installation a little bit easier. We usually do those on bigger columns, but uh, you know, standard you know, six foot to 10 foot columns. This is our preferred connection. And that concludes our presentation. Uh, any questions, uh, you feel free to contact us. Thank you.